Sup, this is Mouse Prower. Today we're gonna to do a video on how to make kicks, specifically the more dubstep modern stuff, like stuff you would hear in Trap or Rhythm, Bass House. I think one of the main defining features of my music, at least for a while, was the drums. And I would normally send these like drum samples in like Discord servers. And since then I've now released a sample pack and a lot of people often ask me how I get those type of drums because they fit really well with the song and I think that's partly due to the fact that because I sound design them I can make them fit whatever track I want to work on which makes them very versatile and I think that's like the best aspect of it so a lot of people kind of want to know what my drum process is like but I feel like it's really hard to describe everything especially because the fundamentals are pretty important to understand so I figured I'd start off uh, this series by just touching on kicks since that's a very simple process that I can easily walk you guys through and show you guys what I'm doing and, and what I'm looking out for. A lot of people I feel like don't really touch on this so much because to me drums are so important that it's like usually the first thing I always make in a track. I, I would usually make a, a drum for a track and then I base everything off of that much like mixing you know. I guess we can go ahead and get started by just talking to you guys about what is a kick you know. Uh, anyone who's familiar with production knows what a kick is, but you know what really is it? You know structurally and fundamentally. Uh, I'm just gonna grab some kicks from the sample pack. I think this one's kind of cool. Uh, it's a bit experimental, but it, it's still you know it's like a good sounding kick. A kick drum is some kind of bass trance. It's kind of low end transient. Obviously, you know it comes from the the actual bass drum of, of a drum set, but in electronic music, kick drums are very different from that. While acoustic kicks have more of a like uh, lighter, uh, thumpier tone. Electronic kicks are a lot more aggressive and that's because they're made with you know, actual synths. And usually the sound source of this is gonna be a sine wave. As you can see, the, this kick is basically just a super fast sine wave slowing down, but obviously there's a, a curve to that, you know, that steepness. And that's what creates the, the punch and the transient of the kick. So understanding kind of how that works is really important. So. It's best to kind of think about like the higher you know the pitch you start at, the more kind of clicky and zappy it is. While the lower it is, the more thumpy and kind of punchy it is. Um, if we grab like some other kicks, I'm just gonna grab some from random here. You see that the main consistent thing here is that they're obviously all sine waves, and they're all like normalized. None of them have any weird like dips in their volume, and if they do, it's kind of more like the house stuff, which is more catering to like the old school style, but. With the, these kind of dust of kicks, they just basically have like a, a transient at the start. Some might be sharper than others, but they all end with the same kind of like pitch envelope. You know, they, they go pretty low. They don't go too high and they don't maintain that tonal too much. Otherwise, it's going to sound a little more kind of like bassy and 808 like. You can see like a lot of these are pretty short, often being like, I don't know, like a hundred milliseconds or so long. Nothing too crazy. But having a shorter kick in general just makes mixing especially with like a very heavy sub kind of easier and it also helps to if you notice not have super processed kicks now these kicks are a little bit processed they do have like some disperser and transit shaper but they aren't so like super chuggy like a lot of the kind of the disciple sample packs on spice are not to say that they're bad but i feel like it's really hard to make a good drum hit fit if it's super processed and clipped so one of the main things that i made sure to to do when i worked on the pack is that I kept everything at a very kind of clean slate or at like the absolute threshold. So none of them are super clicked, maybe like like these two, like kick and fet. If you notice at the top, the sine wave starts to kind of square off here and that's indication that it's clipping. So you're gonna get a bit of distortion, but if you mask that with some high end, like I mentioned in the mixing tutorial, you can get away with a bit of distortion, but just to kind of give the producer a lot of leeway, I, I like to do my best to not clip it too much but just for a little bit of texture, you know? And that's basically kind of like what I look for in a, in a kick is a proper normalized sound, not too long, just short enough where it has that nice attack and punch and keeping it not too processed so that way it's still very malleable in the production process. Sorry about that whole rant, but putting that out of the way, we can finally start to make a kick here. I'm gonna be using face plant today. Normally I use kick two, but for this demonstration, I feel like Faceplant is a pretty good medium in terms of like the plugins that most people have. Now for those who don't know, Faceplant is a plugin by Kilohertz, which they're known for making some fantastic effects, but you can also use those effects within their Faceplant synth, so it's like a cool type of modular setup. 
And this makes it really useful for making drums actually because you can kind of split different channels and process them differently and then process them together. So it's kind of like a all-in-one Ableton thing, which I think will make translating all of this much easier for any people who use other DAWs. So we're gonna start with the analog and choose a sine wave because obviously that's what most kicks are made of. We're basically just gonna make a envelope for the pitch and the volume. So I like to use the LFO tables here because you can actually kind of move them around and make different shapes just like in Serum. You can actually make them envelopes too. So uh, yeah, it's pretty sick. And you can make some really good curves here without having to mess with like some super complex ADSR setting. So this is what my go-to usually is. And usually I'll start off with a shape like this and then I'll tone it afterwards. But basically we want like a really steep start and then slow it down. So from the first like a uh, parameter here to the second is basically going to be the transient. And then afterwards, it's just going to be like the base tail of the kick. So we do it all in one. We don't like kind of split the layers. I am going to split it for the transient, but I like to keep the kick really consistent. So I try my best not to like intercept anything or create any weird phase issues. So uh, that's why I kind of do these like really steep and then slow shapes. Let's go ahead and apply this to the pitch. Now, by default, most synths will have a unipolar setup, which basically means that it's only going to go up from the note that you're playing in this case. So like what this means is that when we press like a note here, it's going to be going down to the D2 that I'm playing. Obviously, this is not the kind of result we want. And to maximize the amount of pitch we get, so we get a very clear click, we got to actually turn this into bipolar which is going to basically you know so it's going to go upwards and below the, the parameter that we have it set to basically this means that we have a wider pitch range which is going to allow us to have a much more prominent click while still having a nice you know low end already that's a pretty decent start but it's pretty zappy so i'm actually going to decrease the length of the first parameter here and we just kind of want like a little tap um you don't want to super zap Something like this but we want the base to be still kind of prominent so to kind of maintain like a proper like linear slope we're gonna actually extend this all the way so no matter you know how low it goes there's still gonna be some kind of movement that's not too bad though i think that's a pretty solid start and the cool thing about this is that you can actually speed up the lfo table that we have here so we can make it a little faster or slower if we want to, but that's actually a pretty decent slope that we have so far. I might just do that. Yeah, nice. So I guess we can go ahead and also do the volume for this. So I again, I like to do pretty short kicks. So I'm gonna try to make this as short as possible while still having a nice kind of proper uh, fade here. We're just gonna kind of mess and see what we can do. I'm gonna put the gain at zero and then put this here. We gotta set it to off, by the way. But you don't have it in off, it's gonna be repeating and you just want it to be a straight envelope. So the, my, that might be a little too much. I'm gonna boost it up a bit. That doesn't seem too bad, but again, we'll fix it in the post-processing. It's just to kind of cut it off, you know? Uh, next up, I like to do distortion, of course. Uh, I put it on hard clip and turn off this DC filter so there's no weird, like, harmonic situation happening. I just wanted to cut off the top. That's not too bad. Um, I might do like a little bit of like a automation thing here. I'm gonna duplicate this, but we're gonna keep it unipolar. And this is just so I can have a bit of a bit of a movement on the drive here. That way this has a bit of like, you know, punch to it. So it's pretty decent. It's a little bassy though. I might actually lower it a bit more. Okay, that's not too bad. So now let's go ahead and add the transient. So I'm just gonna use the noise feature here. So I'm gonna go ahead and start on the transient too. So 
cool thing about KillArts is that it has a dedicated noise generator, and you can actually kind of crossfade between white and brown noise, and in between there's actually pink noise, which I think is much nicer for our hats. So we're basically going to make like a fake hi-hat here within the kick. And then since it's running through a distortion, it's going to kind of clip together, but it's going to be a nice sizzle, you know. So I'm just going to put it on the slope, and we can actually just use the ADSR within here just to keep it simple. I'm going to use a filter here to cut off all the low end because noise has every frequency, you know, so we got to kind of control that. Also, it's going to be very loud. Wow. Uh, let's just lower down the gain a bit. And maybe shorten this. Usually transients are pretty good from like 10 to 30 milliseconds, I find. Yeah, that's kind of cool. And I'm going to do another filter, but this time it's just going to be like a little like a dip in the frequency, which is going to accent that format, you know, which gives the, the noise a bit of a texture. Okay, that's not too bad. And you know what? I might actually split the lanes here. So I'm going to send the sine wave to lane two, and then the noise is going to go into lane one. That way I can kind of process it a bit. Uh, something that I really like to do is to use the KillArt Convolver, which is basically their convolution reverb. And I'll throw in a base, like a hi-hat or something. So I actually do have a hat. Hat 2 is kind of cool. And what this is going to do is that it's going to trigger a impulse based off the noise we have here. Normally noise will just basically trigger the whole impulse, but because we kind of create a bit of you know, form it with the, the notch and the filter here. It's gonna be a little different and it's gonna give it a, a closer sound to an actual hi-hat. We just gotta kind of mix it in. That's kind of cool. Now, I think I'm actually also going to add Disperser. Now, normally Disperser is basically just like an all-pass filter, so it's going to be bad for phase, but it creates like a really nice chewy transient, similar to kind of what you get in OTT. And we could just bring it up with Transient Shaper, so it's probably fine. I'm going to put it on the lane too, that way the sine wave also gets affected by it, which is going to create sort of like a laser dip, but it's not going to be too intense. It's just for some flavor on the transient. But then we're just going to boost it with the transient shaper and... That's not too bad. Also, stretching the convolution will actually kind of change the pitch, which can be a great way to get some different tonalities. I'm also just going to put another filter before it, so that way the hi-hat doesn't have any, you know, low end just in case from the, the impulse. Also, frequency shifters is a great way to kind of change the trigger for the convolution, so... That's kind of sick. Again, we might change the volume a bit here. But it's not too bad. I'm curious to see what the waveform looks like, so I'm going to take this second channel and put it on resampling, which will basically record whatever we're doing in Ableton. So I'm trying to get the fade out of the kick just right, but I think I'm actually just going to make like a wall here, and then we'll just fade it out in, in post here. So I'm just going to go ahead and render it one more time here. Alright, nice. So this is a little longer than what I would normally use, but we can just, again, do a little fade out, and that's a pretty alright kick, I think. It's got a cool little transient at the tip, and that's going to make it really good for claps because when you layer it with claps, that transient is going to hit in first, and it's going to create like a really nice, you know, tap to it. And I try to do my best to trim off as much as of that pre-shift here because of the disperser, so you might want to move it around here. But that's pretty usable. It's very short. It's very nice and tappy. And the best thing about having a patch for drums is that you can go back and pretty much just edit it to whatever liking you want. Like I might actually, you know, make it a little more bassy here. So I'm going to mess around with that.
All right, let's see what that looks like. And that's a pretty decent kick. And again, you can just render a ton of these and save them in your own, you know, sound design folder. One thing that I highly recommend experimenting on is just making your own little unique twist on the process, uh, making it kind of fit whatever track you're working on. And a good way to kind of learn some more interesting tips and stuff about like maybe pitch curves and the volume is to actually find a song that you really like that has a good kick and just look at the waveform because usually the kicks are pretty easy to actually spot on the waveform. So you can just take a bit of it and just do your best to recreate it using like a face plan or something. I've done that for stuff like Sissy Tracks and Knock 2 stuff and that's kind of like the main inspirations I get for my kicks, uh, Noir stuff too, just really big like analyzing sessions where you just look at some of your favorite kicks and try to recreate it and that's a great way to kind of learn the process of you know making kicks and especially with the speed so hopefully that was pretty useful um, for anyone who's interested in getting some of my kicks again we got the future sound sample pack and there's lots of other stuff like you know pairs and claps and stuff hopefully for those who are interested in the actual sound design process you guys can go ahead and start making your own kicks um, if you guys do want to be more involved with the community i did open a discord server not too long ago so go ahead and feel free to send you know your kicks and stuff in the samples channel so we can you know kind of all check it out and share so yeah i hope you guys like today's video i know it's been a highly requested topic for such a long time ever since i started posting samples on Discord and stuff, so I seriously appreciate it for all the support and the patience. I will be back with some more videos, and I do plan on doing some more live streaming if you guys haven't caught the previous two. I broke down Garriga, and I did like a random like, you know, production session. So anyways, enough rambling. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.